Now, last week we did our initial impressions of the Zoom F8, new audio field recorder from Zoom. And one of the things I mentioned was that I kind of looked at it as sort of an enthusiast grade recorder. And let me explain a little bit about why I said that. I think one of the things that really is expected in professional grade recorders is that you'll have a built-in limiter. And that limiter uh, will be effective at preventing any sort of audio recording issues that come when someone speaking modulates too much. <laughs> they get too loud. And when that happens, you run into a situation like this. This was recorded with my Zoom F8, and we were using an Audio-Technica AT4053B hypercardioid small diaphragm condenser microphone. You can see here, I was probably even coming in a little hot on the, the standard talking dialogue, which is what you see right here. We were actually peaking somewhere in the minus 10 to minus, even up to minus eight range. So normally I like to aim for minus 12. Um, we were coming in a little hotter than that, but then as soon as I started yelling as loudly as I could, you can see that we completely and utterly clipped the audio. And if you don't know what this sounds like, um, I don't really wanna play it for you here because it actually, I think, my understanding is this can actually um, irritate your hearing <laughs> so and actually potentially do damage. So we're not gonna play it right here. Um, if you're not sure what it sounds like, go ahead and make a recording yourself. Make sure you get the volume on your playback, speakers or headphones down. You don't want it really loud. You wanna just be able to hear it just barely. Um, but it sounds awfully distorted and it, it is not really usable audio. It's certainly not professional grade audio. So that is, that's what it normally looks like. This is with the, comp or sorry, the limiter turned off in the Zoom F8. Now, when we turned the limiter on, it looks something like this. That looks a lot better visually. However, it's not perfect. <laughs> and let me explain why I'm even talking about this here. The Zoom F8 actually is a little bit different than some of the other higher grade pro recorders like those from sound devices. In the case of sound devices, they implement a limiter and a limiter is very much like a compressor. What it does is it prevents the loudest parts from actually clipping digitally from actually exceeding zero dB. And it prevents that distortion before it actually gets recorded. In the case of the sound devices, recorders and mixers, they implement that as an analog limiter. And so what that means is that the sound signal comes into the preamplifier, it's managed by the limiter, it's then sent to the analog to digital converter, and you get a decent recording that's not distorted. And it will usually catch most uh, really loud sequences. However, in the case of the Zoom F8, the limiter is actually implemented in the digital part of the recorder. And this is what that means in practical terms. The sound comes in through the analog preamplifier, it goes to the analog to digital converter, gets converted to digital signal, and then the limiter does its job of making sure that it doesn't go too loud. Well, the problem with that approach is that the damage could already be done in the analog to digital conversion. Now, it depends on a lot of things. The Zoom F8 actually appears, and from my sound sample so far, to have a very, very good analog to digital converter with quite a lot of dynamic range. The specification says 120 dB of dynamic range. And I actually find just subjectively, it does definitely sound like there's more dynamic range than most other recorders I've used in the past. So it's just a tiny bit more than the sound devices, but <laughs> the problem is, is that if any damage is done in that analog to digital conversion, that is to say, if it's already too loud for the analog to digital converter to handle it and actually prevent or to capture all of the sound before it actually clips and distorts, then you're gonna get some distortion anyway. And in fact, let's play a little clip here for you so you can hear what it sounds like. And while these waveforms actually look pretty healthy, you will notice there's a tiny bit of distortion. This is what it sounds like. We're gonna go ahead and get really loud here and see how this goes. Test, one, two, three, four, five. This is my loudest voice. Could you especially hear on that last part here where I said voice, there is a little bit of distortion. Let me play through it again for you real quick. Test, one, two, three, four, five. This is my loudest voice. So a little bit of distortion there. So I will say, that the limiters on the F8 actually are better than I expected. Once I learned that they were digital as opposed to analog, 
they actually sounded, um, I, I was actually disappointed at that point, but now that I've done this little test here, they're not quite as bad as I thought they would be. <laughs> they actually do seem to help a little bit. And I think what well, all that comes down to is the fact that the Zoom F8 has, you know, it's doing, in this case, it's a 24-bit recording. So we're working with a lot of bits there. That gives us a lot, a little bit more range. And the specification on the analog to digital conversion in the Zoom F8 is 120 dB, which is actually quite good. So um, I wouldn't say they're totally useless. I wouldn't totally rely on them either. Fortunately, in my case, I'm typically doing dialogue recordings that are in more controlled circumstances. We're doing interviews. We will get a, you know, a laugh from time to time, uh, but we typically won't get really, really extreme screaming and things of that nature. So for me, this is not necessarily going to be a showstopper, um, but I think a lot of people had questions about how good the limiter is. I would say that for a digital limiter, it's doing surprisingly well from my point of view. However, if it's critical that you capture sound without distortion, you're probably gonna wanna look at a sound devices recorder or mixer because you're going to get an optical analog limiter in that case. And you could also look at Zaxcom, Zaxcom Nomad and Max recorders. Instead of actually using a analog limiter, they're actually implementing something a little bit differently. They actually do have a digital limiter, but they have two analog to digital converters. And what that means in practical terms is they're actually able to achieve a much wider dynamic range in the 137 dB range. So in that, that case, they call that technology never clip. Um, I haven't personally tested it myself yet, but it looks like that's another way to kind of tackle the same problem. So let me just give you one example here before we go of an actual analog. This is technically a compressor um, which is very similar to the limiters. I know it's not exactly the same thing in all cases, but they are very, very much related. Here's an example of what happened when I did the same recording with an analog compressor on my old kind of outboard <laughs> channel strip. It's called a Focusrite Trackmaster Pro, and it has uh, just a very simple compressor here. Let me play just a couple seconds of this for you. Now I'm gonna talk a little louder. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and yell, and let's see if it clips at all. Test, one, two, three, four. I'm talking really loud. Now in that case, I'm not hearing any distortion, nothing obvious at least. And looking at the waveform, it's, they look pretty clean. It looks like the compressor actually did its job and prevented from any sort of clipping. So there's a quick look at the Zoom F8's limiters. They're digital, so that's a big disadvantage. However, the amount of dynamic range that the preamplifier and the analog to digital converter in the F8 has makes it so it's not a total loss. I don't think it's a total showstopper for people that are doing fairly controlled type of recordings. And I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.